Yo, bartender. Bar is closed. Hey, yo, bartender, what's good, man? Let me, let me, let me, let me get a drink, man. Let me get a shot. Hey, man, I know you just pulled up to the bar, but we closed. Come on, come, come on, man. I, I, I you, you, you gotta be able to give me a shot, man. Come on. You look like you need a drink, man. But I hate to tell you this, man. We about to close. So, so you mean to tell me all these people out here they got, sh they got drinks and they got shots, but I can't get nothing. The bar closed that soon. Okay, man. I don't know what else to say. I got this show to have my age at the crib, and I'm trying to get to it. But last call was ten minutes ago. You know what? It's alright. Don't you know? Don't even, don't even worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Tell you what. I'm gonna get you one drink. Does it look like you need one drink? One. I I can I can do one drink. I can do one drink. Cause I I really yeah yeah. Hey man, anything man, anything man. Look like you got a lot on your mind and you need a friend right now. Pour it on me. Ain't no last calls here. Bar talk with Jay. Welcome to Bar Talk with Jay. Welcome. One of the things I want to brought to you by today. The sponsorship is a new company just coming up called Talking Trash. Now, tell me that ain't something. Bar Talk and Talking Trash. Yes, this is a new company that's just coming out. And I'd like to tell you, my minority owned. Uh, I met him myself. And one of the things I can tell you, he's going to be doing great things. I work with him already. He's inspiring. He's been in the business before. It was a little bit something different. But I think he's engaged to do the same thing that I've been doing for a long time. So when you see that come out, Talking Trash, it ain't me. I've been talking for a long time. It's a podcast? It's no, it's actually a garbage company. Oh. Called wow. Talking Trash. Wow. So it's gonna be a game changer in the trash world. And like I said, it's one of the things that I know is I met the owner. He is a person that's gonna give you that full cooperation to get that trash away from you. So give him a, tr a try. Trash talk. <laughs> Coming soon. All right. I gotta get back to the person that's been rocking with me. This person's been rocking with me going on seven years. We got an anniversary coming up September the 17th. One of the things I gotta say is, Graphmatic, how you doing tonight, big baby? I'm doing fabulous, Jay. Man, you're doing good, man. I ain't, uh, I ain't I got no, uh, you know, I got problems, but uh, just working hard, man. Trying to make things happen in life, you know? Okay. Yeah, how you doing tonight, man? Man, I'm gonna tell you, man, I'm very blessed, man, and I'm very happy, man. I mean, I, I tell you, after taking your class and understanding Minecraft Central, it's just amazing how I try to stay more focused mm. than just uh, the in in. I like to say I just stay in the mist because I'm so hyper. Yeah. So I stay more in the social media. I stay more in what's going on, and now I'm drilling back into my focus, my purpose. Yeah. So it's one of the things that you you, you and, and again, y'all didn't know Minecraft Central is one of the greatest things that you could possibly add to your life. Uh, again, it's. It's words, but it's also the concept of changing your mindset. Deprogramming to reprogramming for a better future. Everybody's not capable of doing it, but you can be broke down and understood. You got taught wrong. Now you got to be broken down to be a better understanding of self. Yes. I feel like that's the most powerful thing on the planet. Because regardless of what somebody taught you, just to know you and then to be able to deprogram to be the best you, is where everybody need to be. And that's what I really feel responsible saying. Minecraft will get you there, Minecraft Central. But one of the things I can tell you is working next to you helped me. And that's why I smile and I am more upbeat and I stay more focused is because I'm starting to learn new techniques. So again, give it a try. And I endorse that. There you go. A great way to introduce our show. This is Bar Talk with Jay. My name is Craft Manic. This is my boy Smooth Jay. In the field. And we are here to liberate your minds and souls with a great dialogue. We just want to chop it up tonight on this subject, a subject of uh, interest to all people. <laughs> tonight we're talking about love versus lust. Ooh. Love versus lust. And so we want you to sit back and enjoy the show. Uh, get involved from your seat. Make some clear and conscious decisions about how this information impacts you. What will you do? What are you going to do? How did you handle it? Uh, and how are you going to handle it when this situation comes up? Because if you are seeking love, you're probably going to have to, you know, get through the murky pits of lust. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so uh, we want to thank you folks again for being with us. Uh, we do a, uh, a prayer to start your show off every night. Oh, they you know, ain't going to need you on this one, Greg. All right, let's let's uh, let's hand it over to the Lord. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence right now just thanking you for love. 
We thank you for the feeling of love. We thank you for the experience of yes. love. We thank you for the truth that it brings in our life. We thank you for these fantastic emotions that just flow through our spirits as we experience this thing called love. But sometimes, Lord, we don't quite understand love. We miss mm. the mark. We misinterpret love. Mm. And it ends up being some type of lust. Mm. I believe, Father, that you can inspire us tonight. And we're asking for your wisdom and intelligence and guidance on the subject. Be here with us and allow your inspiration to take place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, crap. Yeah, you touch some folks with that one. Mm. Mm. Touch some folks. What would you like to start, Jay? Okay, well, uh, let's go back to my younger youth. Uh, love and lust. Start off more of a love, uh, lust than a love. Because I had to understand uh, me. But I always had a, a, a you know, you never got to teach nobody bad. Lust is just one of the things you ain't got to teach. It's one of the things that you just lust for. And a lot of times when it came to how people was looking and how I see them, I lusted after a look. Okay? Looks. Okay. And a lot of times uh, when I fell in love, it was our emotion and our feeling. This person is showing me a lot of respect, loyalty. They were there for me. And the feelings got to be so great. I associate that back with love compared to lust. Because lust got me off a of look. It was one of the things I lust after because I, I wanted certain things. I, and, I, and it was a mental mess. Um, and then when I found out about love, it didn't have nothing to do with all that. Because I fell in love with people for being great people. And it didn't matter about man or woman. And again, it wasn't a, a sexual preference. It was a love of being around a great spirit. And that right there had me in a loving fashion. That's kind of like where I came from. But when I was lusting, I was looking for love, but I was using a tactic that wasn't going to give me love at all. It was a lustful tactic. I was looking toxically at what I wanted. I seen somebody and I said, man, Ooh, she fine. Ooh, she fine. I got to have that. Yes. I didn't know her. Right. But I know I had to have it because it looked good. And she looked good with me. You had to have what looked good. And I, I went after it. And uh, luckily, some talked to me. Some did. Some was already in awe. And graciously, I respected it. And then the other ones that were single, they just didn't feel me. I get it. So, right. again, I had to go through that little trial. But then I got one of them that I was chasing after. And we talked. And I, I, I had a thought of love, but it really was based off of looks. Because I love how she looked. Man, I, I can just stare into her and I seen yeah. all kinds of things because I'm imagining everything. Yeah. So now I'm imagining and we're talking and I'm starting to feel different. Because she's not the ideal person that I call myself being with. I put myself and put her in a position that she did not ask for. I put her there because I dreamed it up. It was my reality that I wanted that wasn't a reality yet. And she made it very clear it wasn't hers either. Um, so I battled with her for no good reason because she didn't know my expectations, what I wanted from her. But I came from her because she fine and I, I just knew she was going to be like this. So I gave her some expectations off the rip. Okay. Like, and and again, I didn't know no, I didn't know no. She she probably do this and she will walk like this and she will dress like how I seen her. This is her, mm. and that wasn't always true. She didn't want to dress always like that. She just dressed up for that one occasion. She that, that, that how she was. She didn't always speak the way I would have thought she would always speak. I had my own conclusions of what she was gonna be compared to learning her right. and seeing her for her. Right. I had her in my head. How she should be. And guess what? She showed me her. She wasn't that way. Though. And she wasn't at all. But see, is that wrong or right? My whole thing is I had to grow. You had to grow. And and lust lust will cause you to, to end up in a place where you um where you gotta make that decision. Yeah. You know, where you, you, you have to make the decision, you know, is there is there more value here? Is there something else going on other than how they look? I mean, let's face it, lust comes from the eyes it does and love comes from the heart and so it should be easy for us to tell when we're operating in love and operating in lust 
However, when you have somebody who is just not whole, right? Right? Maybe they're still dealing with some old hurts. Maybe they, you know, they had a bad person in their life, and so now they've lowered their standard, even though you know they don't want what they had, but they'll take somebody at half level because it's better than what they had. You know, um, you know, lust can lust can just cause you to fall into a place where you are. Uh, you're only perceiving the outer and the outer is never the whole truth the outer oftentimes isn't even a piece of the truth right, right. oh you know i know you know that's totally because true. what we lust at is we lust that shapes we lust that figures. figures we lust that outfits and how beautiful her hair was, or his eyes, or you know, what what kind of shoes he had on. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, lust comes from the appearance of things. Where it does not come from the heart of things. And as soon as the sooner you get that, you know, that's one of those that's one of those evolutionary seasons where we have to grow from thinking like a young man to thinking like a grown man. And we realize that you know what appears is is not reality I agree. right what appears is only surface and and uh it takes people a long time to get through that right there are people who have been picking people for many years only based on how they look and they have never really gotten past much of the surface of the lust I agree. And because they lust so hard that they're pulled into relationships with people that really don't express love to them, that they really don't have a love connection with, why do we fall in love with what? Why do we fall in love with a look? Why do we fall in love with shallowness? Why do we fall in love with people who aren't whole, people who maybe aren't dis who aren't respectful, people who maybe don't have a a life going on. Why do we fall in love with those people? I like uh, to say the right. lust has to go deeper. Even even the lust has to go deeper right. than the surface. I agree. It's about you know we we believe sometimes that women lust after men's money and things and stuff and what he can do. Uh, you know maybe you know who he is is not a bad thing to fall in love with. Right. Right. But if you're falling in love with him because of status, if you're falling in love with him because of money, if you're falling in love with him because of influence, if you're falling in love with her because she's only a dime piece, you know, on the outside, but she got a bad attitude on the inside, that's not going to work. If you focus, if you if you're falling in love with somebody because you know she looks good on your arm, but she's not really good for your family. If you fall in love with somebody who's really not looking for what you're looking for just because of the appearance of things, you're going to miss the mark every right. single time. And we've all had countless of experiences where we were kind of judging the book by its cover. Okay. But once you get a little experience under your belt, and you can identify this, okay. you are able to see way beyond lust <laughs> in a short period of time. You won't see the love but you will see the character of the person and less about what they have on and how fine they are and how beautiful they are and you know the, their status and you know their position their influence you're going to look beyond that stuff and you're going to say oh they're a selfish person or you'll say oh they're a real nice person oh they have a really good heart they have a caring heart oh they are you know they, they they tend to the details of of a friendship of a relationship oh they really you know they really want to uh they you know they they got a great mind they're charming they are respectful they're positive they're we we have to look beyond uh we have to look to the character of a person and when we see genuineness and wholeness and goodness goodness that's the person to fall in love with Right, I tell you, that. don't fall in love with him because he has a nice car, and we done seen it over and over and over and over and over and over. Don't fall in love with her because you know maybe maybe she has a little money, you know. Don't fall in love with her because she can take you out, you know. Those aren't the things to fall in love with, you know. Not at all. 
um, um, the chase. Uh, I think the, the let's just see if we can come up with a rule of thumb here, Jay. But no chase. One second. Uh, the chase is on. Um, I don't know. I'm trying. How would we say this? Like, like when you're chasing somebody, and you're really chasing them for the lust, mm -hmm. the chase diminishes once you move to the reality of them. Sometimes, because they're not the person who you thought they were. I agree. And so, uh, if you ever had a person, you went out with them, and for some reason they didn't call you back, <laughs> or for some reason they didn't want to go out with you again. Um, you know, they lost the lust and they were looking at the real person and the real person didn't look like somebody they wanted to be with. I agree. But again, I don't no. think everybody just leaves with lust, but I think we always have an eye for it. And again, it's like I can't. I don't know, Jay. I think we lean. I think the world I mean, lead with the lust. The world can because of social media and the rest. But the bottom line, everybody doesn't have to fall victim to it. You don't have to. That's right. So when you get older, you start realizing that's not what I care for because I did enough. Yes. I chased after a, a very gorgeous person. Yes. And again, um, I found out through time she wasn't all what I thought she was. She, uh, the, the good looks had some dirty dark side dark side yeah not to yeah. bring anybody down yeah. but it was yeah. not something yeah. i was anticipating right and i i would like to say it was my lust for i that helped put me in a situation that i put myself in she was just looking nice and i didn't get the chance to get to know her but by the time i did i started seeing things a lot differently yeah and listen just because you don't see love don't mean the lust is over I mean, no, right. no, not at all. Because yeah. I might just decide to, you know, to touch that. You know, I might just decide to, you know, make friends with her. I might decide to, you know, she's my my boo thing to go out with. Right, right. We just hang out, you know. Well, uh, like you know one thing about life and relationships is that, What's that? you're not going to get everything in everybody. There's always going to be a box that needs to be checked. There's always going to be somebody who comes and there's something about them that just doesn't fit. Right. But it doesn't mean you can't accept them for who they are. It doesn't mean that you don't find value in many of the other things that they bring to the table. You might think of them as a close confidant or maybe a great friend, but they'll never be a girlfriend. She'll never make it to the missus, right? But she still has value or he still has value. Okay. And so, you know, you fell in, you, you fell in lust and realize that it's not Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, then you have to figure out where you're going to put that person in your life. Right. And I think somewhere between the lust and the love, there is a friendship to be built. And I like some I, sort of I friendship. I love what you just said because I like to say lust of a look should get you into a friendship to understand, to build a love. And a lot of times it's a process. And again, one of the nicest ones is finding somebody that you're attracted to. And a lot of people say, lust is all wrong. No, lust is, I, I see you in a way I, that you are gorgeous to me. Not to everybody else, but to me. Right. So that's fine. Now that you're gorgeous, I need to make a friendship before I can see a long-term. Right. So now that I see you looking nice and I, I think you're gorgeous, now I need a communication to see how far it can go yes. and build it up for I can build a love. I like to say sometimes lust goes straight to love and then there's never a friendship. Well, so, you know what? You say something very interesting right there. What's right? That? The lust goes straight to love. You know how lust goes straight to love? Sex. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> we all know, bro. Right? I mean, let's just talk about it real. And we have had this conversation on numerous occasions before. Okay. How many relationships should not have been made into a relationship, but the lust and the sex led you into a love relationship, right? A lot. There's a lot of them. A lot. And let's talk about why, though. Why? Let's talk about it. Because you had a lust for her. Right. Where men are hunters. Right. So you had a lust for her. She was beautiful. You've seen her. Yeah. You've seen her in this beautiful way. Yeah. And then... You engage with something that, that already you know that normally feels good. That's sex. So now that you don't have sex with her, you basically almost conquered her because this is what you really stood out for. Right. And then you didn't really know. So this is where 
all the things that you thought was so right turn around and be so wrong. And then you wonder, why did I even waste my time? Because you lusted over it. You didn't do a friendship first. You went straight to a sexual thing, which is more gratifying. So now I feel like it got to work now. So now you're willing to pour more in to which you ain't even understand. Well, here's the best. thing. Here's the thing. And we talked about this on, on uh, a few weeks ago. We talked about sexual chemistry. Mm -hmm. and, and so when lust leads, when, when, you know, the, down the path of lust, there has to be some sexual chemistry, some intimacy type chemistry. Okay. It's going to have to be some chemistry, right? The vibe and so. all of that stuff, right? You but so. if the vibe is real good, you wind up having sex. Correct. Could be first day, and, second day, and then there is a whole nother vibe created once you have sex. Mm -hmm. And if you can survive that vibe, that's the vibe that just might lead you down the pathway of deciding if this is Mr. or Mrs. Right. Right? Because there's a lot of things said during sex that isn't verbal. There's a lot of connection that happens. There's intimacy that happens there right. is i'm feeling you there is right. you you know there's you know and then those moments after sex where you might lay there and talk or you might get up and go out you know right. and, and and next thing you know you holding hands next thing you know you're you're, you're talking on the phone more you're a couple yeah <laughs> next thing you know you're moving into couples mode right, right. you wanting to spend time with each other not to mention the sex is continuing to make sure that you be there every night you know, for a little while. Yes, sir. But at a certain point, uh, you're going to have to determine, and, you know, women press the issue more than men. And I think that's the nature of things. But mm -hmm. at a certain point, women are going to try to take the situation and elevate it and escalate it and say, hey, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be my man. We're going to be together. Women typically, you know, Not typically a woman you're giving a lot of sex to or you're, you're having intimacy with, with often that they want you to be there with them. Yeah, they don't want to share. They don't want to share. And you can't, you know, you can't fight with that. There's nothing, there's, there's no equation to, to push against that. Uh, but when you get into that mode and you're not, you know, you're you're having lots of sex and you're spending lots of time and maybe money and all this other good stuff with one of one another, uh, somebody is going to fall in love. And get and, feelings. Yeah, somebody's going to get feelings. And that's going to say... Let's fall in love. Now, it might happen and it might not happen, but that when you get to that experience, somebody's going to have feelings and they're going to have to be addressed. Yeah. And the hope is that you like this person who you're going to have sex with every day. It could be a booty call at first, but after a while, you know, favors are going to start coming out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a, do something special for you for lunch or I'm going to take you out this weekend. I want you to meet my family. Let's celebrate the holidays together. Let's celebrate your birthday. Let me, you know, let me, you know, let's start thinking about a future. Let's start, you know, let's get engaged, you know? I mean, there's going to have to be some progress. And if there's not progress, typically the love part of it will fizzle out and you might hope that the lust will stay there because once the love fizzled out that now you got a person who might be mm. mad with you a little bit mm. they might have an attitude with you mm. they might decide they don't want to see you as much because mm. you ain't trying to go in the direction that they're trying to go mm. and you got to understand that you know guys if you are you know making love to a woman and you're not committing to her to some degree she's pushing you away uh, not on purpose, but passively she's saying, I can't let my heart get in, I can't let my heart get in, I can't let my heart get in. And every session is going to pull her a little closer to you. So it really puts women in a in, in somewhat of a challenge, challenging situation when they have to decide what's more important, the D <laughs> or love. And if you, you know, think about it this way, if you just lean, if she, if she were to just lean on the D, then she may be missing the opportunity to find love. If she just lean on the love, then, you know, he may not be ready. He may need some talking to, uh -huh. you know, it, it's all kinds of things that, that can happen. But uh, you can't just lean on the sex. It's going to ultimately, you know, elevate. And the only way it doesn't elevate is if the two people 
are like-minded and not interested in having a relationship. There are those relationships that happen. Now, we, we, we got to talk on that one because that's one of the issues that I'll tell you all day long. When you go from a lust standpoint, just looking at her and you liking her, then you go into sex. Because it, it gives a uh, sometimes a false expectation of where it's going. To her. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and, and even sometimes I can even say to a guy. To a guy, yeah. Because now you assume that, hey, now we done did this. It's something. Right. Without conversation, I like to say you assume it. Yeah. Now, and that's what causes a lot of relationships, issues, and problems. Right. And one of the things I would tell you, Tibbets, if you guys went on ahead and you liked and you vibe and you didn't did it, Couple of things you might want to try to do, okay. and that is communication often. Okay, often. you can make sure that person really suits you because you need to know if y'all can tie communicational wise, you know, because you do it sexual wise. But then did you call her after you left her to see if she was okay, and then you made it home? There's just different things yeah. to see if y'all really care for each other. Communication will help that. And see, secondly, those would be the, travel. A, yeah. Can y'all do a quick trip? Okay. Because y'all already had sex. So you, you do a quick trip to see if you can really get along with that person. Because it's early on. Early on, everybody got high expectations, but we don't really know if we qualify. See, see Jay, the, 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 the preposition to your argument there what we? is suggesting that I'm looking for a girl. No, no, no. And we, a guy ain't necessarily got, doing no, that. You are correct. If you see this in that person, okay. If it's not that, then no. These are the things you don't do. This is the but, conversation you know, that, like, I had conversations on upfront. I ain't want a monogamous, and I said this where a woman can walk away from me. Right. Well, look for no monogamous relationship after my divorce. I am looking for a person that I can chill with and kick it with. And it's like, oh, so it's just uh, like you Netflix want, yeah. and it. Yeah. I said you call whatever you want, but I am not looking to be committed. I'm doing this on the upfront. I'm trying to do homework because a lot of people try to do homework behind me. Right. I'm doing it on the upfront because you got a choice not to deal with me. Yeah. So they'd be like, okay, I can win them over this. But Jay, here go the thing. Okay. You're such a sweet man. You you can't you you take them out and you take them on the trips and you buy them stuff and you host them at your home and you right. you put a little money in their pocket every now and again and you 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 might even pay a little bill for them you know like that stuff says that I hey it the only people like, who's ever done like that this is chicken daddy it sound like that, the only <laughs> people who ever did those things for a woman are guys who like them Correct. and want to keep them around. But sometimes, especially in a single man's world, we might do those things just because we want to do them. I, and it has nothing to do for with a commitment. She she actually showed me this is something I want to do. I don't want to do it with everybody. My whole thing is I treat people according. Right. So if a person comes in my life and I might not care for a monogamous relationship, tell me I got to treat them bad because I didn't want this. Right. I'm still feeling like I still got to respect you. So again, if we're going to do some things, we're going to communicate and we'll do it. But the bottom line is, even though I say I didn't want a, a monogamous relationship, I didn't want everything on the upfront, I might want it later. It is never just off the table. Okay. It's just not on the upfront table. Right. You can't force me into something that I don't care for. Right. And then if I feel like, you know something, I, I, I feel like our friendship has evolved to a point I want to do something different. I want to be more monogamous with you. Yeah. It, I owe you that conversation. So, and you can give it back to me and say, well, I don't see you like that. I have it asked. might hurt, but it is an honest, upfront conversation. Right. I, have, I have asked you this question. Exactly. Have you ever pushed a woman away from you because you knew mm -hmm. she was ready for a husband, she was marriage material, and you didn't want to disrupt her journey toward getting a husband? Yes. And I think that's true love. That's true love, Jay. Because I got to a point where she said, I want marriage. And I did. And when she found somebody and she moved on, yeah. I had to respect and leave her alone. Right. Because I knew her journey. Right. And I was smart enough to realize, you didn't want it. You didn't ask to do it. Why would you stop her from somebody else? Because at that point, you ain't a true friend. No, you are a hater. No, you are a person that want to confine somebody but don't want to commit to nobody. So I've lost a lot of people throughout time with me being the person that I am to say I don't want them in our relationship. Yeah. But I have many women that, that say it, even though you might not want it, I enjoy being with you. you know I what? enjoy being with yeah. you because you're more upfront yeah. and being honest compared to a deceiving yeah. person this this behind my back saying I want to be with you and, and I want you forever and then they see he cheating with everybody you know what he, he, he doing his own thing I uh, I tried it right I tried to have a girlfriend 
her and and not and be non-committal to her. Okay. And it worked out for a while because the whole time in the back of her mind, I think she was thinking that she was going to change my mind. Right. I would ultimately change my mind. And I was using soft language like, you know, I, I'm considering it. It's just not time and All those right. type of things. Um, but ultimately, I was holding her back because I was not going to get married. And, you know, at this place and space in my life now, I really would like to have an eternal companion with no pressure for marriage. I'd like to have somebody who, when they, when you want to be here, be here. And when you don't want to be here, go on about your business. But as long as you want to be here, I'm going to treat you like wifey because I only know how to treat a woman specially. Right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to have you around and, you know, decide I'm not going to do things for you because I don't want you to perceive it as wifey. If I want to give you flowers, if I want to take you out, if I want to do nice things for you, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And those things will make you feel like I might have changed my mind. Mm-hmm. But what I really want to do is stay out of the paperwork. Now, if you can have a lifetime love relationship with me without paperwork, we probably can go somewhere. You, you really right? can. And I'll give you paperwork, but it's going to have to be some vetting done. It's going to have to be some due diligence done, and that's going to take time for us to grow and for me to trust again, right? Right. Now, what I what what I'm telling you, I've been there, and I'm letting you know right now there is marriage right now is with the government. It's a contract with the government. You can actually get in contract with a woman, and you can do a, a living trust, and you can lead things to them. You know, they're, they're looking for stability and long term. And that's everybody thought for. it was in just marriage. Right. It doesn't have to be. Right. It can be in what I set up. So I'm not asking everybody just to run off the marriage. And I'm not frowning upon marriage because I got married before too. Even though I got divorced, I'm not against marriage. My whole thing is I can always set you up to make sure you're good. Right. Because my whole thing is to provide and do the things to make you feel that you can be the best you. I get it, but do I have to do a contractual agreement with the government with this marriage thing that we have here? No, you don't, because you can do some things, and again, it ain't just a yeah, wheel. There is a living trust that you can do, right. that you can leave somebody a whole it's lot of stuff life. to make them more comfortable to see you in a way so, that they don't feel bad. So women have said on numerous occasions that you're afraid of something. And what what is it that what, what what is it that makes a man not interested in marrying? Half, I can lose half <laughs> my wealth because you can decide that you can say half. yes, half of my wealth, the half that you did not create, right? the half that I did before you ever got there. I built a legacy that I was trying to leave to my kids, and I was building it up for the reason of being there as a father to provide. So I'm building it up. You come along. I have a desire to be with you. I see you. Now, we get together. We get married. Now, all it takes is for her to perceive. It don't take nothing to see you flirting with somebody or doing something that she can feel that's a certain way. She can change her mind. Now, she's walking away with half of my wealth because she decided she didn't want to be with me. Now, let me tell you what he just said. And I'm going to say it in the same exact terms he said, right? He... Experienced lust. He found his way through that mm-hmm. to find a real person. He found his way through companionship into love. But just because he loves you, he's afraid of the institution of marriage. Correct. And, and and that's a big point that's happening a lot. If women, especially women, I, I you know, I'll say this to men too, but but especially women, if you've been with a guy for three, four, five years, 10, 12, 15 years, and he hasn't asked you to marry him, more than likely he is afraid of the institution of Mm -hmm. marriage. Correct. And automatically, let's just be real, he has seen something in you that has made him decide that he would rather not marry you, that he may not be able to trust you in a marriage or that he may not want to be married with you. But... You know, when people are outside of a lifetime commitment, they'll settle for less. You know, I'll listen to your bullshit and your fussing and griping all the time because you're a dime piece and we live together and I got to take that shit right now. And that's, I, I'll suffer that, right? You might decide that the guy, the guy who your boyfriend you stay with, 
you really ain't quite into him no more, but he paying bills. You know what I'm saying? He coming with he coming with a check. He might start dropping you a trip. You know, big brand you. You know, and so you stay there because there's some fringe benefits in the game. You it know, is, but and, correct. And it's not the way to be. But I gotta have some fun. But I heard two women talking. One of them was a little younger than the other one, and she was like, "Yeah, I date this person, and I got him to pay for me a trip, and I got this." And the other one told me, "Yeah, well." I got a house, car, and things paid for. And it was like, oh, how'd you get all that? I married him. And then I divorced him. Right. And then I divorced him. So again, see, you see. don't know how people can manipulate situations. And I don't, I'm not saying this is for everybody. But I can tell you, if a woman feels a certain way and she can walk away and I can divorce you and I can get something out of it, don't think towards the end, that was my friend and she ain't going to do this to me. I watched it happen several different times, and let me tell it you, it gets very ugly. It gets ugly, and 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 see that that's what makes us all a little bit more afraid, is that we're having relationships with people and we're getting in deep with them, we're, yes. we're loving them and holding hands and showing up and introducing them to our family and our friends and our coworkers, and they become a part of our lives, and then when we break up, it is like a horrible breakup. It's like you hate my guts. So if, in fact, I was married to you, you'd be taking me. You'd be trying to, to hurt to me. Cleaners. You'd be trying to use the law against me. And we're, we're seeing that all over the place. And it Correct. makes men Correct. afraid. A lot of women already know, if I'm going to divorce you, I can go down to the court system and say you did something to me. And that will remove you from the home. That's the start of the divorce. Now that you removed from the home, she goes go ahead and fill out the paperwork. I'm giving out game because this is gonna happen several different times. So now the sheriff department comes and asks you to get your small belongings. You ain't even allowed to take a whole lot, and you need to exit the home. Now you are kicked out. She files for divorce with more women filed than men. She filed for divorce. She gets the home. Now you in an apartment. She got the home because she got the keys. <laughs> Then you kind of tell me, and where's it, the fairness? Well, the whole thing is a lot of people say, well, she's taking care of the kids and this and that. Yeah, I get Where's it. the fairness? But there's no real fairness see, because that's it, it is all a game. That's it. When somebody used this tactic because they can see how they can get her out, my whole thing, that's a game. Break up. Why do a man want to go unfair. through a game-changing event that caused him trauma? Yeah, he does. I have to build it up. Then to lose it, to build it back up, to do it again. And then the next person I meet is dealing with my scars. Right. Because I am hurt through all this. Yeah. But I try to be the best person for my kids. And I try to be uh, decent to a woman that did me so wrong in so many different ways. But, it is so difficult. Right. It's hard for the next one. So now she's trying to build up a scarring person off of something to another woman. And she knows all about it. She's not that way. So it takes us to understand a lot of things. And my whole thing is I'm not against marriage. I'm not against monogamy. I'm against rude people just doing things the wrong way to get over on your ass. Because everybody's trying to find a way to get it, the bag, without doing anything to do it for themselves. If I can so get off another person, you, that's what they're going to yeah, do. What you're, that's hearing, not what you're hearing from Jay is his fear of being done wrong in the breakup process. It's not about the lust. It's not about sex. No. It's not about the love. It's about that commitment and its potential to break up. And nobody has ever really had a lifetime relationship. I mean, you leave your parents' house mm -hmm. in 18, 20 years. And there's really nobody else ever who sits in the gap that's going to be with you all day, every day, all True. the time, all your life, share all your experiences. And so we don't know how to deal with that. That's that's a challenge for us. We it all is. need to be taught, um, you know, how to manage manage more of a, a long-term relationship. But um, I hear you. You know, I hear you, Jay. Uh, but, you know, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about love versus lust. And we can hear that your lustful eyes can suck you into a situation mm -hmm. where you are answering love questions. Correct. And if you're not ready for that, you probably need to control the lust. Like Jay does, you know, I think it's a good idea to say what you want right out front. Yes, it is, but I'm going to give you something on that. Everybody is not willing to accept what they're not used to hearing. Everybody's not used to me being direct because a lot of men play right. on women. Right. All right. I'm I'm tired of playing. 
And again, I have to say some things, and I'd like to tell you, I can be dating, I can be looked at as an asshole. Why? Because I'm not quick to give you what the hell you want to hear or do what you want me to do because I believe in me. Yeah. I had to build me up to realize that a woman can get, a woman's a, you work too much, you do all this. Somebody got to pay the bills. So quit playing with me and telling me about what all I do and see what you can help me do. Because a lot of people sit back right. and try to control you. Okay, yep. now that I don't become successful because I'm trying to spend all this time with the kids and now we've fallen in poverty, is because sometimes people talk you out of a destiny. You got to understand where the hell I'm going, when I'm going there, and understand it and commit with it. But that's why I say it. Vessels get together and they have no damn clue to where they're going. Yeah. You should see me where I'm going. And compliment me on the way. And then we go our own separate way. Nobody got off task. We get with people that ain't going no damn where. And then you're wondering and you're arguing. That is because you need help. I'm you sorry. know what, Jay? That's so powerful, man. Because I'm I'm actually, the, the last several women that I've entertained in my life, I'm actually looking to join what they've got going on. Okay. I'm interested in helping them. Satisfy their goal. Satisfy their dream. I already know where I'm going. Thank you. And to be honest with you, if you're not interested or you're not going to participate in where I'm going, that's that's part of the love broken right there. What? Right? There's because, no love at all. Yeah, because I and my vision are the same thing. And if you can't support me on, on those vision, two. You, know, you don't need to be with me. Yeah, that's a train track that's going. No. And if you're not going to get on that track. You're really probably but, hindering me. But, crap, how many times you notice a woman knows she ain't going where you're going, ain't trying to go where you're going, but you are a, a person of wealth and you are a, a strong, good dude. She's going to ride that train knowing you're not going in the direction she is and just because you are in a position okay. that she can still get you. I'm okay with that, Jay, as long as I see team. I'm okay. I'm okay that she may not even have any interest in what I do, but I know just through history that couples who are not like-minded do not make it. I'm going to end up wanting to do these things, and she's going to not want me to do that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. She, you the train is pulling everything. Yeah. She's the caboose what breaks on. Yeah. And so women don't all have she's to do doing that. is dragging you down. Why? Yeah. Because she knows you're going somewhere. Right. She don't mean to just be a hindrance. She don't know how to add value. Yeah. She's not that person. Yeah. But and that's why it caused a lot of problems in the heart end. Yeah, but the, pro- the, the 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 woman who I'm looking for is going to add value. It's not only is she going to add value, she's going to be doing her own thing. Right. I want her to be as seasoned in her craft and her gifts as I am seasoned in my crafts and gifts. And to be honest with you guys, especially middle-aged men, okay. if you meet a woman, you know, per, maybe perhaps a younger woman, but if you meet a woman and she doesn't have the drive that you have, um, you're going to have to take that into consideration. Huge consideration. That's a, that's a major, major part of, you know, helping you get to where you're going, right? I can only you. say that I might look the other way. Yeah, we, I we, might look we the look, other way. When we look at successful men... Uh, many of them are married. Most of them are actually married. Yeah. And their wives can probably tell you all kinds of stories of how they kept them in the game. Yep. Of how they supported them, you know. Mentally, it, it, yeah, physically. It, it wasn't Michelle Obama's interest to go to the White House, right? But she supported But she stopped family. doing everything in her power, any, everything that she wanted to do, and she got on his train. And now they made him the most famous person in the world. And now she can do anything that she wants to do. My Still. hope is that he is supporting her like she supported him. And that's what I'm looking for. I, you know, I'm looking for a love to be there in my relationship, but I'm looking for more like-mindedness. Okay. You know, let's come home and talk about the business, talk about the market, and talk about what's going on. We don't have to talk about how much you like me or don't no. like me and what I did wrong. You know, um... Self improvement. Yeah, that's, is that's my at, way of looking at it. Always looking at things different. Yeah, and it, adding value and not looking at who does everything. That's right. Yeah, it's not always a hundred, hundred. It's, it's the them equations it's, change yeah. all the time, and you got to be able to adapt to it. Change. But everybody wants it to be one way. It's not every couple that made it through life, long term marriage. Is the one that's willing to sacrifice and understand the significant other team. I will always tell you one of the things I always want to do 
just wake up and look over there at somebody and say, you know something? She breathing, she living, and God has blessed us another day. Yeah, I, want I pray over her, yeah. she pray over me, and we have yeah, a we blessed do. day, and we make our family blessed. Yeah. So let's be a blessing and not a curse. There you go. Because a lot of times, you don't know all the things that you're doing that's hurtful, but I promise you, when you walk with God, he walks within perfectness, not you. Walk a better life. Understand that. This has been Bar Talk with Jay. My name is Crab Matic, and this is my boy Smooth Jay. And we hope you have enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, we are here every Thursday from 7 to 8, Facebook Live, yes, and yes, yes. every other major platform. Please like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends and family, and uh, never forget that we do this for you yes. because we love you, we appreciate you, and with that, we are out. Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay.